Good afternoon. This is lesson 8 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will study the thermocouples. As you know, the thermocouple is one of the most uh, widely used temperature sensors for industry because it is cheap and it is rugged as well as it is easily replaceable. So, making all those uh, qualities, I mean, actually lead to a very, I mean, extensive use of these temperature sensors in almost all process industries like steel, petrochemicals, um, fertilizers everywhere. Now, the contents of this lesson uh, will be the principle of working of thermocouple, that means we will go, uh, go to the Seebeck effect, Peltier effect and the Thomson effect. Then the laws of thermocouple circuit will, I mean, explain why this law is necessary because in many cases we will find the two uh, the tables for these thermocouples, not for all thermocouples are available. Different types of thermocouples and their specifications, this is very important because if you use any dissimilar metals, obviously you will get the output voltage, but uh, people over the years they have seen that if you use a particular uh, two different metals or alloy of the uh, alloy, you will find that the output will be large, that means sensitivity will be high as well as nonlinearity will be less. Also the signal conditioning circuit which is to be discussed like cool junction compensation and all those things. Although we will discuss uh, as well as we will uh, discuss here the uh, a semiconductor temperature sensors, even though it is a thermocouple circuit, but that semiconductor temperature sensors will be utilized to make the cold junction compensation. What is cold junction compensation? That will be explained after some time. At the end of this lesson, the viewer will know thermocouple and lead wires, its range, sensitivity, cold junction compensation as well as semiconductor temperature sensor that I told you. Now, you see it is a sensor which relies on the physical principle that any two different metals A and B are connected together and EMF that is the function of the temperature will be developed at the junction of these metals. These expressions we will find E equal to A 1 T plus A 2 T square plus A 3 T cube plus so on, right. Therefore, we can see that this temperature EMF relationship is clearly nonlinear. We will see that most of the thermocouples it is actually represented, this voltage temperature relationship will be represented by 7 to 8 degree, sometimes even 9 degree polynomial. That means, it will go on A 1, A 2 up to A 9. There are some thermocouples obviously, which will have uh, which will obviously have the second or third degree, which can be represented by second and third degree polynomial. Because you see these are nonlinear term, that is the reason thermocouple even though it is extensively used in industry, it is a always the, there is a thermocouple charts available, that means for each thermocouple you need a chart. So, they have to, if, if you get an unknown voltage from looking at the chart, you can find what is the, what is the temperature, what is the unknown temperature. But please note this is not very, I mean, I mean it is a very serious problem because you see nowadays you can have your, you, know, you can build your own ROM where you can correlate between the temperature and EMF. So, the nonlinearity problem can be immediately solved. The values of the constant this A1, A2, etcetera depend on the metals A and B, right. It does not depend on the temperature, it depends on the metals and it is a constant, you will find this is a constant. So, for the metal is pure or metal is the same type of metal you will use, you will get the same value of A and B, same value of A 1, A 2, A 3 so on. I have you see here, we have metal A, we have metal B, okay. now T 1 is one junction temperature, T 2 these two junctions, two different junctions, metal A and metal B has a junction here, metal A and metal B junction here. T 1 is one temperature, T 2 is another temperature, T 1 is greater than T 2 and we are writing T 1 minus T 2 equal to T, temperature difference, right. So, I will get a voltage E, right. Now, there are three EMF present in this thermocouple circuit, right. We have when two 
the Seebeck effect when two dissimilar metals are joined together and EMF exists between the two points that is the function of the junction temperature. This is the most prominent okay. otherwise you will find the other like Peltier's and Thomson of all also will exist there, but it is not that prominent. If two metals are connected to an external circuit in such a way that a current is drawn the EMF may be altered slightly because if you can use a meter which is has a very high mode impedance obviously it will not draw any current. But if you uh, try to measure the voltage obviously it will, will draw some current. So, this will affect it, it will make a Peltier effect okay. So, because the EMF will be altered. And if a temperature gradient exists along the either or both of the thermocouple wires okay or metals maybe time we are saying metals but ultimately you see these are the two different wires right which is uh, actually used to make the thermocouple. It looks like I mean you see that if I take a blank page two different wires okay. So, there is a junction here right. So, this will give you I can draw it nicely. So, this will make the thermocouple. So, suppose this is uh, your metal A, metal B. So, this is our junction. Please note this is our junction. So, it is two different wires actually, okay. even though we are repeatedly telling it is a metal, but these are two different wires. If I go back, so this is our Thomson effect, right. Now, two important rules for analysis of thermocouple circuit, there are two different laws because you see that there are uh, infinite number of I mean uh, combinations of the metals you can make, but obviously you would not get the I mean uh, you can you cannot make the thermocouple chart for each and every I mean combinations of the two different metals. So, you have to use some laws of intermediate metals or laws of intermediate temperature also. These two laws are very important for solving the uh, problems on thermocouples which we will see later on not if you obviously in this lesson, but in some other lesson at the end of this course we will solve some problems there we will find that in this type of I mean in laws of intermediate metals and intermediate uh, temperatures is very important. If a third metal is connected in the circuit metal C you see the metal C is connected here right metal C this is a metal C which is connected this is a metal A this is metal B right. Whatever the temperature it does not matter. So, it has some different temperature obviously here I have some temperature here you see that what we have seen that this is the temperature T 1 and this is the temperature T 2. Now, we are taking the T 1 equal to T 2 if T 1 equal to T 2 it does not matter our EMF will remain same as before. Right, because it is two dissimilar metals we have connected like this two dissimilar metals. So, these are junctions. So, this is a metal A this is metal B. So, I will get a current right or you can show like this one ok. I will get a current I will get a current and this is a, this junctions will be if it is if I connect some other metal inside. So, far this temperature remains same our EMF also will remain same it would not be altered as shown in the figure the net EMF for the circuit will not be altered as long as the new connections are at the same temperature this is the law of intermediate metals right. Now, if a thermocouple produces EMF E 1 when its junctions are at the temperature T 1 you can see here ok. If a thermocouple produces EMF E 1 when its junction at the temperature T 1 and T 2 this is the temperature T 1 and T 2. So, okay, two different temperature this is a metal A, this is a metal B, this is a whole wire I, I got a voltage E 1 right. And E 2 that for that we have to go for next slide metal E 2 uh, sorry temperature T 2 and T 3 will be there same metal metal A and metal B I got a voltage E 2. Now, if I have the temperature of T 1 and T 3 two different because previously it was two metals and two different junctions are T 1 and T 2 this T 1 T 2 like this one like that this one. So, this is T 1 this is T 2 right and now we have connected another one where it is T 2 this is T 3 
Now, if now the temperature is T1 and T3, then the net voltage will be E1 plus C2, right? That's I am actually that is the intermediate temperature. It is if I go back to the previous slide, you can see. See here, if a thermocouple produces EMF E1, and when its junctions are at the temperature T1 and T2 and E2 when at the temperature T2 and T3, then it will produce an EMF of E1 plus E2 if the junctions are at the temperature of T1 and T3. This is the law of intermediate temperature. These two laws, there are many laws, but these two laws will be very important for solving problems. Okay. Now, now we will discuss some of the important, most important thermocouples which are used in industry. So, I call the specification, this is a, I mean uh, written in table 1. So, this is important because you know, you must know that you, as I told you there are, you can make any combinations of two different metals or alloy, you will give an output obviously. But that will not give you our uh, desired purpose because I need large sensitivity, I need good stability, I need inertness. I need uh, easy replaceability, these all these materials. I mean, so, depending on that, we will find there are 7 8 thermocouples, and some of the thermocouples are very widely used in industry depending on the temperature range, depending on the whether the atmosphere is oxidizing, oxidizing or atmosphere or the reducing atmosphere. So, uh, depending on the output voltage you will get from the thermocouple. Please note, thermocouple sensitivity is very poor. So, per degree centigrade change of temperature, you will get very small amount of voltage. Right. So, you need signal processing for that. So, it is not very that you will get a large voltage, even though the voltage is in the order of millivolt, but the sensitivity is very poor, it is around microvolt per degree centigrade. Right. So, all these things are so large EMF is always a desired properties of a choosing thermocouple. At the same time, you will find that the linearity, stability is all this very important, it should be inert, like platinum, platinum, rhodium. Platinum, platinum, rhodium, you will find that it has the lowest sensitivity is around 10 to 12 microvolt per degree centigrade, but however, you will find it is advantage is inertness, it does not react with any other because uh, it can work very nice in the I mean in a hostile environments also, right. So, you see this is the and in most you know, another important thing is, is the industry they do not mention the thermocouple by name, they do not say chromium constant and copper constant and iron constant, platinum, platinum, rhodium, they do not call usually they give a type name. So, it is accepted for the in, the in the any process industry over the years. So, we also give the uh, typical name or type I will say of this particular thermocouple. So, when you say that the type K that means you must know this is a chromium aluminum thermocouple. You see here this is a type K. So, this means it is chromium aluminum thermocouple. What is chromium? Chromium will be positive, aluminum will be negative. That means what it does it mean? That means if I uh, if I take a blank page, it will be more easy. You see, it's a, if I take a like this one, this is our thermocouple, right? So suppose this is chromium, and this is aluminium. So, this will give you positive voltage, the positive side of the voltage. So, the thermocouple output is a pure DC voltage, right. So, there should be some polarity will be there. So, which is positive, this is negative. This is very important while you will see the lead words connections and all those things. Now, please note another thing while I will discuss the specifications. In the thermocouples, you need a lead words. The lead words means that you see that the some of the thermocouples are very expensive, like platinum, platinum, rhodium. And you cannot, I mean, you, you cannot install your uh, instrument or uh, voltmeter very near to the point of measurements. It might be far away, it might be 2 meters, might be 3 meters, even sometime more, right. In that type of state, suppose I have a boiler which has a temperature of suppose 400 degree centigrade, I cannot install a meter very close to that. It is not possible also, you have to transmit that signal over a long distance, or even just if you have a monitoring instrument, it must be, uh, you have must measure the voltage. Suppose it is a monitoring, it is in the case of transmitting that is different, but if it is simple monitoring instrument, I measure the voltage. If I want to measure the voltage, I cannot install this meter, voltmeter very close to the boiler, the meter will be out of order, meter will be damaged. So, there should be some wire, okay, some distance of wire, suppose 2 meter, 3 meter. Now, the problem is that you will find that if you have a, uh, 
if you have a I mean a thermocouple or uh, platinum platinum rhodium uh, type you cannot install a platinum platinum ro rhodium lead wires okay because it will be, it will cost it will increase the cost of the entire system because thermocouple is available if I like this one so it is a is a terminal will be available here right so you connect the lead wires there now it will come to the your voltmeter so you will get a voltmeter is not it so you can connect a voltmeter there so this is a certain distance here this is certain distance we will find around suppose like some few meters okay so i need so uh, people suggested some uh, a particular um, uh, class of for each thermocouple uh, thermocouple wires there is a particular type of lead wires also have been recommended now you cannot change the lead wires if you change the lead wires you will find your calibration also will go wrong you cannot the flip also the lead wires i will show you uh, what is that now you see here this is a chromal aluminum thermocouple and it can be represented by 8 degree polynomial what is that we have already told thermocouple z equal to a1 t plus a2 t square so on so in the case of this type of thermocouples so a1 8 after that it will be insignificant the coefficient so i can ignore that thing so it can be represented by the 8th degree polynomial right its application is basically minus 200 degree centigrade to 1300 degree centigrade and the main application however is from 700 to 1200 degree centigrade in the reducing atmosphere that is I told that it should be a you must mention whether it is reducing or the oxidizing atmosphere. Total voltage swing that means for this change of temperature that means from minus 200 to 1300 degree centigrade I will get a voltage swing of 56 millivolt. Now typically you will see that the thermocouple this sensitivity of the thermocouple you will find it varies that means per degree centigrade change of temperature how much voltage change I will get at the output of the thermocouple that is called the basic sensitivity of the thermocouple. It varies from um, suppose in the case of platinum platinum rhodium 10 to 12 microvolt to 60 microvolt per degree centigrade maximum not more than that. Lead wires as I told you you see it is recommended that means iron copper nickel alloy you see here this iron copper nickel that means in the lead wires iron should be connected to chromium and copper nickel alloy should be connected to the to the alumel right similarly there are two options you can use instead of iron nick, copper nickel alloy you can use a copper and constant and that means copper will go to the chromium connected to the chromium and constant and will be connected to the alumel right so for each thermocouple you will find this type of uh, tables are uh, this type of uh, I mean specifications or lead wires have been recommended. You see uh, this is a T type of thermocouple this is also quite widely used thermocouple this is a copper constantin and copper is positive constantin is negative that means if you connect a voltmeter positive side of the voltmeter should connect to the copper and negative side will connect to the constantin this can be represented by the 8 degree polynomial application minus 200 to 350 DC behind this a temperature oxidation of the copper will occur so we cannot use because if you oxidize the copper is oxidized is your entire calibrations will be no more valid so you cannot use up beyond 350 degree centigrade we do not need to because there are many other thermocouples which can be used now voltage swing you see voltage swing you have calculated 26 millivolt for minus 184 degree centigrade to 400 degree. for this change that means around 584 degree centigrade total change in the output voltage I will get 26 millivolt you can see that how much is the sensitivity now you see another interesting point in the case of uh, I mean low cost thermocouple you can use the same wire for the lead wires also because you cannot get a cheaper wire than this one suppose the iron constant and obviously we will use iron constant and as a lead wires copper constant you cannot have may have a cheaper than this you also have you should have the lead wires also of the copper constant and right so copper should connect it to copper constant and should connect it to constant and there is no problem now J type of thermocouple this is also quite cheap thermocouple widely used thermocouple the positive is iron negative is constant and it can be represented by the 7 degree polynomial 
application is minus 150 degree centigrade to 1000 degree centigrade. It is usable in the oxidizing atmospheres to about 760 degree centigrade and reducing atmospheres to 1000 degree centigrade. So, in which atmosphere you will use depending on that I will you will choose the temperature range. Voltage swing you see minus 184 degree centigrade to 70. So, you see sensitivity is not much high because the uh, here the range is quite high I mean quite uh, large whereas in the previous case that copper constant in the range is small. So, for minus 184 degree centigrade to 760 degree centigrade of voltage temperature change of the hot junction. So, I will get a change of 50 millivolt right and lead wires iron will be connected to iron positive and constant will be connected to constant and this is as I told you earlier this is the platinum these are all noble metal obviously it is quite expensive. Now, first one the positive side is platinum 90 percent and 10 percent rhodium right and negative is platinum please note it can be represented by a second and third degree polynomial right. Now, main features of its chemical inertness stability at high temperatures and its oxidizing atmospheres reducing atmospheres cause rapid deteriorations and high temperatures and typical range is I should range is should be 0 to 1538 degree centigrade voltage swing is 60 millivolt. Now, copper uh, in the case of platinum platinum rhodium I mean thermocouple you cannot use the same it is expensive we use copper and copper nickel alloy. This is also the platinum platinum rhodium, but here the uh, rhodium percentage has been increased. So, instead of uh, 10 percent rhodium because it, as you know rhodium is more expensive than the platinum. So, it is a 9, 87 percent platinum and 30 percent rhodium alloy which will make the positive terminal and negative is the platinum can be represented by a second or third degree polynomial application is 0 to 1593 degree centigrade voltage swing is 18.7 millivolt. So, copper should be connected to platinum rhodium copper should be connected to platinum rhodium and negative copper nickel alloy should be connected to platinum ok this will give. Now, we have one more two more rather platinum rhodium this is one positive which is platinum 70 percent 30 percent rhodium and platinum your 94 percent 6 percent rhodium that will become negative it can be represented by 8 degree polynomial. So, no I mean advantage as it have in the case of 10 percent and 13 percent rhodium and application 30 38 to 1 a 180 degree centigrade. Now, you see application is almost same for all the all this I mean platinum platinum rhodium thermal that is the reason we have not represented we have not written it I mean um, repeatedly, but it is same right as it happened in the case of first uh, I mean slide of platinum platinum rhodium thermocouple. So, same the lead wires are copper copper nickel alloy. Now, E chromel constant and this is actually rather uh, I mean it is a newer thermocouple which has a, a sensitivity is the highest please note it is a very high. So, it is 0 to 980 degree 82, uh, but it is 9 degree polynomial and the 75 millivolt for this range voltage swing will be get will 75 millivolt. So, it is quite high that inside it is more than around 65 micro volt per degree centigrade highest in, in fact. So, iron constant in other lead wire. So, iron should be connected to chromel and constant and should be connected to constant and right. Now, what is constant and constant is an alloy which is 55 percent copper 45 percent nickel chromel is 90 percent nickel 10 percent chromium aluminum is 94 percent nickel with 3 percent manganese and 2 percent aluminum and 1 percent silicon. Now, typical sensitivity is 10 micro volt to 60 micro volt that I told you earlier. Now, coal junctions you see the uh, the thing is that in the coal junction that means in the industry you are uh, while you are I mean making this uh, you uh, making a thermocouple hot junction will be the measuring junctions and coal junction is supposed to be at 0 degree centigrade right. Well, I mean if it suppose if it is instead of 0 degree centigrade if it is something higher suppose 15 degree centigrade or 35 degree that is not a problem I can add um, accordingly add or subtract voltage from our actual voltage. So, I can get the actual I can get the voltage actually the voltage for 35 degree centigrade of the hot junction I mean coal junction. But the problem is if the coal junction temperature varies it is not possible it is not it because if you cannot can maintain the coal junction at a constant temperature summer will be one temperature 
in the winter there will be some other temperature, in the uh, monsoon there will be some other temperature of the cold injection. And measure injection is something different because you are measuring that particular temperature in which you are interested. So, I, but I am not interested to know the uh, there should not be any variations of the output voltage for the change of the temperature of the coal junction. So, I must be have some sort of mechanism by which that I must correct the voltage output from the thermocouple, right. So, that is called the coal junction compensation of a thermocouple circuit. If I mean temperature variations of the coal junction can cause significant errors in the output of the thermocouple pair, there are two alternatives, right. One is maintain the coal junction at a constant temperature by some technique as an ice bath or thermostatically controlled oven, okay. Or subtract a voltage that is equal to the voltage developed across the coal junction at any temperature in the expected ambient temperature range, is not it. Because the and you see that there the latter one, this one is much easier the number 2 is much more easier than the number 1 because it is you cannot have industry you cannot if you have a some 500 thermocouples you cannot have a 500 ice bath um, thermostatically controlled oven ok. So, we have to make this type of the, some electronic circuits is necessary to make the subtract the voltage equal to the voltage developed across the cold junction at any temperature. So, it will automatically nullify the variations of the cold junction temperature. Now, in this context I must uh, discuss one junction semiconductor sensor actually that is utilized widely used for in industry for making the cold junction compensation. This is developed by the uh, analog devices. Now, you see in the junction diodes are well suited for temperature measurement. The junction potential of a silicon transistors and diodes changes at about 2.2 millivolt per degree centigrade over a wide range of temperature 2.2 millivolt per degree centigrade. This property can be used as the basis of an inexpensive sensor having fast response even though it is used as a temperature sensor, but I will use this particular property of the semiconductor junction diode to make my cold junction compensation of the thermocouple circuit. Now, analog device AD590 is a two terminal temperature sensitive current sources, right. It is a current source which passes a current numerically equal to microampere to absolute temperature when excited by a voltage of 4 volt to 30 volt at a temperature between minus 55 degree centigrade to 150 degree centigrade. You see this is a quite wide range I obviously I can measure a temperature suppose of 700 degree centigrade that is quite obvious, but obviously the cold junction um, actually temperature does not vary between uh, it is a quite it, it will not go, go below minus 55 degree centigrade neither it will go above 150 degree centigrade. This is a quite wide range I should say usually what it happens in our tropical country that temperature will vary suppose uh, 7 to 8 degree centigrade which is very cold to suppose uh, 40 degree centigrade. So, with this temperature range I can make very nice cold junction compensation by this uh, devices. Now, this is a symbol of the constant current source you see it is the range is minus 55 degree centigrade to 150 degree centigrade which equivalent to 218 Kelvin to 423 Kelvin and it will give you for this Kelvin temperature 218 microampere to 423 microampere. So, that means for 1 microampere 1 Kelvin change I will get 1 microampere change in the current. This is a, in a simplified circuit of the cold AD590 you see the 2 transistors this IT is divided in 2 half Q3, Q4 and Q2, Q1 and there is a resistance R the details is coming next. If the transistor Q3, Q4 are identical, the current IT is divided into two equal parts IC1 and IC2, ok. Let us go back. So, we can go. So, IC1 and IC2, ok, it is going in IC1 and IC2, divided into two equal parts IC1 and IC2. Now, Q2 consists of 8 transistors in parallel. So, the current in Q1 is 8 times the current in each of Q2, quite obvious. Again the different between difference between VBs that means voltage emitter base emitter drop of the uh, transistors two transistors of two identical transistors with different collector current is proportional to the absolute temperature. Now, I can write that V t equal to uh, V b 1 minus V b 2 equal to that means base emitter drop of the two transistors k t by q natural log i 1 by i 2 equal to k by q if you put all this k q Boltzmann constants then electronic charge all the, all the values 
you can put natural log because I 1 and I 2 is ratio is 8. So, natural log 8 t. So, you putting all the values of the Boltzmann constant and the um, electronic charge I will get 179 10 to the minus 6 uh, into t, t is the temperature into volts right. Now, the V t is the voltage across R and is also proportional to the absolute temperature. Therefore, the current through R that means that resistance I C 2 must also be proportional to the absolute temperature. Since I T equal to 2 I C 2 the total current through the device I T must be proportional to the absolute temperature and if R equal to 350 A ohms then obviously what will happen you will find the I T by T current uh, for by temperature it will be 1 micro ampere per Kelvin right. So, using this property so people are making. So, following figure will show that a simple application means the variation of the cold junction voltage of the type J thermocouple iron constant and is compensated by a voltage developed in series by the temperature sensitive output current AD 590. You see this is our circuit is a very common circuit used in all laboratories all industries that temperature ranges minus I am sorry 15 degree centigrade to 350 degree centigrade. That means you see this uh, cold junction is very close to the AD 590. Right, this uh, cold junction temperature may vary, and this is the measuring junctions. This is my measuring junctions, and this is my cold junctions. Let me take. Uh, okay. That means you see, this is our measuring junction, and this is our cold junction. This is AD five nine zero and it has supply voltage 75. This is just an odd, it is 8580 same analog device, but it will give us I mean stabilized power supply or 2.5 volt is necessary. And this is by the voltage, this iron is a constant and this is also constant and this iron constant, this is, this is actually the scheme is for iron constant and thermocouple. This is true for any thermocouple, only you will find the value of RA will change as the thermocouple changes this value of R A will change right otherwise it is the same circuit for everywhere. That means this 52.3 will be different for different thermocouples. I will show you the different charts. That means this A D 590 so this will give you current. So, probably this will be my output voltage see. So, this voltage will be in the even we can show you experimentally if I change this cold junction compensation temperature cold junction temperature this is a cold junction because this is our cold junction this is A D 590 even though uh, I mean if it, uh, the measuring junction, if measuring junction uh, does not change temperature does not change if that you will see that the output voltage will not change right. Fine. So, this is our uh, hello now we will see that it is output voltage is equal to V t you see it is independent of the temperature or the variations here if the variation it will I a will take care of that because if the temperature increases I will increase automatically the voltage will be subtracted. So, the V t will be there. So, the, that is I want actually my output voltage should be equal to V t. The circuit is calibrated by adjusting R for proper output voltage with the measuring junction at a known difference because you see that we have a resistance R you can see here. So, this is our resistance R. So, for a known uh, resistance so temperature the circuit must be calibrated by calibrating this R value. Now, once it is calibrated, so we can go ahead. So, voltage with the measuring junction at a known difference temperature and the circuit near 25 degree centigrade. If the resistors with low temperature coefficient is used, the compensation accuracy will be within 0 0.5 degree centigrade for temperature between plus 15 degree centigrade to 35 degree centigrade. Other thermocouple may be accommodated with the standard resistance value shown in the table 2. You see this is the table 2, we will find that ISO has said that the resistance RA. So, in the case of J type of thermocouple is 52.3 ohm, for K it is 41.2 ohm and E 61.4. Every time obviously, you have to calibrate it uh, by, uh, by with the known temperature using that particular with the resistance R, but this is the fixed resistance. For whenever you will change the thermocouples, you this resistance R A as subscript A must be changed also. Already we have shown in circuits of the for uh, J type of thermocouple with 52.3 ohm, we are given the chart here, right. So, for S R it is same 5.6 ohm. 
Now, desirable properties of a thermocouple, please note, is for industrial uses are relative large TMF. Everybody wants a large thermal EMF, okay. Especially the change is more important because you can amplify the signal, that is not a very problem. You can amplify the signal, the DC signal, but the change sensitivity should be high. Precision of calibration, you see in industry it is not possible. I mean, usually what you will you see the calibration, you cannot afford to have calibrations every time. What you will do that you will take a large length of wire, suppose copper constant and chromium aluminum or platinum, platinum, rhodium. What the harm can have in you know, suppose for some due to contamination, due to some contamination, the junk, the thermocouple has been calibration has gone wrong. Or suppose due to the I mean the welding, I mean due to the problem in the welding, this thermocouple is cut. So, you just what you will do? You will replace this thermocouple. Okay. So far, you take from the same pieces of wire, you do not have to recalibrate the instrument, that is a great advantage of this type of thermocouple. If I take a wire, a large length of, suppose if I take two wires of the platinum, platinum, rhodium 10 meter, another of platinum of 10 meter, okay. we calibrate it, fine. Once we calibrate, we make our calibration chart, right. What we will do? We will use is a small portion of uh, suppose 30 centimeter portions of we will cut from each of the uh, each of the wire, then we will make our own thermocouple. If it is damaged, then we will just take the same wire again from the, that the same large that uh, that 10 meter wire, again we will make a, our own thermocouple, is not it. So, they do not have to decalibrate the instrument, that is a great advantage. Resistance to corrosion and oxidation. This is very difficult because it is not uh, mostly we will find this resistance to corrosion and oxidation is not available. You have to use the thermocouple in a covering material or a, which is called in rust is sheath. Okay. The interchangeability of the thermocouple is a principal reason for their wide use in application. Best accuracy is obtained when the platinum thermocouple which has the accuracy of uh, half percent of the standard EMF temperature calibration curve. Thermocouples are most commonly made in the form of wires insulated and welded together at the measuring junctions. Okay, as I told you, there are two types of weld: a twisted weld and a bar weld. Okay, what is that? You see here that your twisted weld means you will get where you will get a where. Okay. You will get a wire. Now, this portion is welded, or you can have a bar weld. This is a twisted weld. You can have a bar weld which will look like this. This is a bar weld. Okay. So, there are two types of weld available. Okay. If the short, the twisted weld is for wires or larger side and butt weld for the smaller side. If the wire is small, so you can have a butt weld, if you have a twisted, obviously twisted weld has more strength. Uh, anyway, in order to prevent the forming of a second junction, the wires of a thermocouples are insulated from each other by being threaded to the porcelain insulator, which will retain their shape up to 1500 degree centigrade. Because two, 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 two wires might be get connected. If it is connected, you will get a second junction that is undesirable. So, what you will do? You will pass through the insulator and it can retain a shape of 1000 to temperature of 1500 degrees centigrade. It looks like this. That means, you see that it will, what will happen? You will find that the wires are there. Sorry. So, you will get a wires and a porcelain will be it is passed through the porcelain. That means it looks like looks like okay sorry here it will be there now it is looks like this right 
So, you will get a two different wires and with person in separator will be there. So, you can make a your own thermocouple like this one. Now, multiple junction thermo thermocouple output is very small as I told you, you will find sometimes it is necessary to make the multiple junction circuit, right. So, multiple junction thermocouple is called thermopile. Thermopile is a term used to describe multiple junction thermocouple that is designed to amplify the output of the circuit. It is used in the to measure the radiations, optical radiations, it is very easily can be measured. Since the thermocouple voltages are typically in the millivolt range, increasing the voltage output may be key the element in reducing the uncertainty in the temperature measurement. You see this is actually a thermopile or a multiple thermocouple, there is a measuring junction, several measuring junction, it can be n such measuring junction, coal junction will be at one temperature, okay, measuring junction at one temperature. So, this is a reference junction. So, what is the output? Output will be the n times uh, the voltage of the single thermocouple because, because it all are in series, right. So, I will get obviously large output, right. So, that is actually the thermopile or in a thermopile the measuring junctions are usually located at the same physical location to measure one temperature. Our figure shows a thermopile for providing amplified output. In this case, the output voltage would be n times a single thermocouple, where n is the number of junctions in the circuit. It looks like this. That means, if I take a, uh, you'll find the thermopile. Actually, what they do, they make a like this one. So the So, that this, this centers they make the hot junctions and these are all the outside that are, are all cold junctions and they put a collimator lens over this one. So, when the sunlight falls what will happen? So, it will get a collimated here and all the measuring junctions will have the same temperature, right. So, this type of volumeter is available for optical radiation measurements and the sun rays measurements and all these things. In transient measurements the thermopile may have a more limited frequency range because obviously you can see that that the due to increase thermal capacitance, the time constant of the thermocouple has to be increased. Now, you see thermocouple is you can use it for a very fast measurement because for dynamic temperature measurement. If you look at the time constant, the time constants of the thermistor is very small, thermocouple is obviously high, but the, uh, but the, but the um, it is obviously I mean higher than the th thermistor, but you can utilize it for making the fast measurement also. But the problem is that thermocouple you cannot use as a bear, you need some uh, covering material or sheet material. So, if you use any sheet material obviously what will happen the time constants of the thermocouple will increase and the response time as I we know that if the time constant increases the response, response time will be increased. So, it will take more and more time to find the steady state value of temperature. So, thermopiles are particularly useful reducing the uncertainty in measuring small temperature differences between the measuring and reference junctions. Thermocouple sheath, it is a thermocouple junctions are prone to contamination by gases, liquids and other metals. So, what you see it is looks like this. So, we have uh, I have a thermocouple sorry. So, So, I have a thermocouple okay. so entire things are put on a sheet right. So, this is our thermocouple T c and this is our sheet. right. So, obviously, it will increase, it will protect your thermocouple from any hostile environment suppose um, any corrosions for that type of things it will in, um, protect your thermocouple, but it will increase the time constants of the system. The metals contamination alters the thermoelectric behavior of the device such that its characteristics varies from the that published in standard tables because the calibration changes everything will be changed. So, some of the common sheet materials we see the mild steel it can take a withstand temperature of 900 degree centigrade, fused silica it can withstand of temperature 1000 degree centigrade, 
recrystallite alumina 1850 degree centigrade magnesia 2400 degree centigrade thoria 2600 degree centigrade. effect of the sheet on time constants of the thermocouple obviously if we increase time constant will increase. Now grounded thermocouple you see thermocouples are influenced by the external effects prime examples of the external effects not always considered are the effects of electric and magnetic fields cross topic effects I mean effects connected with the common mode voltage ejection. Now brief review of this follows that the voltage sources are capacitively coupled this all actually occurs when you measuring the dynamic temperature measurement usually for the steady state temperature measurement this is not of uh, very much important but in some cases you may have two thermocouple wires which is going side by side so what is the influence of the measurements in the dynamic measurements of temperature that is to be studied. Parasitic capacitances and causes an alternating noise signal to be superimposed on the desired signal. The noise is minimized by the shielding the thermocouple extension wires and grounding the shield. Right? Now magnetic fields radiated from the current carrying conductors produce noise current and hence noise voltage in the thermocouple circuit. Now magnetic noise is minimized by twisting thermocouple extension wires adjacent pairs of a multi pair cable tend to pick up noises when pulsated DC signals are transmitted as I told you. Now crosstalk noise is minimized by shielding the individual pairs of thermocouple extension wires. Electrical connections made between the thermocouple and the grounded instrument may introduce common mode noise if different ground potential exist along the wire path. Common mode noise is minimized by grounding the thermocouple and is shielding at a single point as close practical to the measuring junction. Now several arrangements you can have for extension wire shield and grounded combination acceptable from the noise viewpoint as shown in the following figure. Now see that is one junction you will find that this junction has been grounded right. Several acceptable you know, properly grounded circuit when the measuring junctions are grounded to the sheath measuring junction is not grounded but it is grounded to the sheath and you see that this this the uh, this the extension shield there is extension shield because to uh, protect your environment protect the your thermocouple extension wires from the external electrical circuits electric magnetic fields this is to be grounded because any electrical wires was once you have uh, shielded it whether you all of almost all of you have been oscilloscope you have seen that uh, the uh, oscilloscope very sensitive devices whenever we measure any voltages we always we cannot give a bare wire like this one there is a shielded cable through where the when through which the signal will go right so that shielding is very much necessary because the shielding and if you if you shield that wire and if you uh, if two wires and if you ground that shield obviously all the problems of the parasitic capacitance can be easily uh, eliminated any capacitively coupled signal also can be grounded easily this is another alternative arrangement you see uh, is alternative grounded circuit you see here the, the thermocouple is not grounded but the sheet is grounded and you see this all the one of the junctions either P type of materials or N has been grounded also. So this is another uh, from a uh, grounding circuit which is used in the ungrounded measuring junction. Now thermocouple you will see that uh, uh, it is extensively used because of the uh, because of because it has a problem problem means it is it is a non-linear devices obviously all the temperature sets except RTD you will find that the are non-linear thermistor is highly non-linear for a very short range I think very very short range you can assume the thermocouple is linear but in all the cases you will find always for any unknown temperature I have to refer in the case of thermocouple I have to refer to the thermocouple chart that means there is temperature I mean EMF chart is available usually I mean available in the some published by some national laboratory or something like that and sometimes you will find that the industry people they make their own charts you will find that industry they make because they are uh, used suppose in the you are they are using all chromal aluminum thermocouples so they make a chart of the chromal once they get the wires from the um, your vendor they immediately they uh, take a sample and make a calibration chart it does not take much long I mean time. So once you get and they publish that one 
So once you have that is distributed throughout the plant, so you will find that uh, whenever there is an unknown temperature using tomilal level, so you can immediately refer to that obviously with the cold junction compensation all those things. So what will happen you will find that the that type of problem you can immediately find the unknown temperature right. Obviously you will find another problem you see that if you measuring very high temperature suppose I am measuring a temperature of uh, 1500 degree centigrade right. And in, in such a high measuring I mean temperature you can have your I mean coal junctions you will find even in the in the bear that means without any coal junction you can bear it just we can leave it in the atmosphere your coal junctions. The reason is you see that the you have to calculate the how much error you are introducing. See even if you if a coal junction changes the temperatures of 15 degree centigrade I mean 15 to 35 degree centigrade total change you will find is not long. So, in that type of situations you will find it is not very difficult to make you uh, I mean to leave these coal junctions pair that means leave it in the atmosphere let it temperature change let it change the output voltage. But if we change that output voltage you will find that it will not change our it will not introduce any significant error if the error is suppose 1 person if there is error is just one person okay. So, we can ignore that error we can ignore this all the complexity of the coal junction compensation circuit right. So, this is the beauty of the thermocouple and you see that in the thermocouple another I mean another great advantage as I told you earlier is time constant also this time constant is very small it is easily available all the RTDs uh, you will find that it is a very bulky its time constant is large thermistor is semiconductor devices its calibration is problematic two, semi, two different semiconductor having the same amount of resistance is also very difficult to achieve. So, all these problems are not there that is the reason over the years we will find it is most widely used I mean temperature range I mean up to suppose 1700 degree centigrade or 1800 degree centigrade. Uh, I should say uh, I should I am not that I mean I should not go to that high temperature suppose 100 1500 degree centigrade I can easily use thermocouple. Obviously, if you have to go higher temperature suppose over above um, 1800 degree centigrade or 2000 degree centigrade we have optical pyrometer sort of temperature measuring devices. Otherwise for the temperature range typically industrial range suppose from 500 to 800 or 900 1200 degree centigrade. I can easily use thermocouple, but please note that all the things you have to even though we are saying of thermocouple whatever the associated circuit that means compensation circuit then your uh, the sheath materials which must withstand that temperature no usually you will find no thermocouple is used in pair always there will be sheath because you do not know you might have a uh, you might be interested to measure temperature of, of the temperature of the hot sulfuric acid. You cannot use that type of you cannot use copper constant and iron constant it will immediately react pair copper constant iron constant thermo immediately react with the that acid. So, I have to put that thermocouple in a sheet material like steel mill so which will not react with the acid that will lead to our safe measurements of the thermocouple iron of temperature. So, with this I come to the end of this lesson that is lesson 8 on thermocouple. Welcome to the lesson 9 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson we will basically uh, cover one of the most important uh, temperature sensor that is resistance temperature detector okay. Resistance temperature detector even though it is not much uh, I mean use in the industry I mean in the plant you will find the thermocouple is huge in number then you will find the thermistor. But I should say for precision thermometry that means if I want to uh, measure the temperature with high accuracy resistance thermometer is a resistance temperature detector is is the only solution because uh, uh, this even though it is resistance thermometer nobody calls nowadays we call it resistance temperature detector and there are three basic classes of the resistance temperature detector you will find we have platinum then nickel copper tungsten 
all these things will be I mean discussed in details. Also the signal conditioning circuit of the resistance temperature detector which are basically nothing but some bridges either you have seen BBS cases also we can use it either in the um, uh, unbalanced uh, voltage mode or you can uh, use it as a balanced mode, right. So let us look at the contents of this uh, lesson. First we will consider the theory of the resistance temperature detector. Then we will discuss the measuring bridges, what are the different measuring bridges in the resistance temperature detector. Then we will see the construction, what is the basic construction of the resistance temperature detector. So obviously at the end of this lesson, the viewer will know details of platinum RTD, then its signal conditioning circuits, its construction. So this is a circuit, you see this RTD is connected to the bridge by a 3 wires. You see 3 wires means you see here there is one wire, there is two, another wire, there is another wire. Now you, interestingly you see this R3 now is no more in the bridge. R3 is in the bridge but the contact resistance is not in the bridge circuit, it is in the galvanometer circuit, it is not in the detector circuit. Or between it is the galvanometers or you can say it is just a multimeters or voltmeter, is not it, right. So, if there is little increase in contact resistance or little decrease in the contact resistance, nothing will happen. What it will do? It will simply make your bridge more sensitive or less, your detector more sensitive or less sensitive. Usually use it, is not it. Suppose in the case, some cases I want to make a use a mini ammeter in a bridge circuit which is carrying a current of suppose uh, 500 milliampere. Even though our detector circuits can only can uh, read 10 milliampere. Usually we use a shunt, is not it, right? Use a shunt and once I am very close to the measurements, so I remove the shunt so that because I know that bridge is almost balanced, there is a little chance of I mean passing a large current through the bridge uh, through the detector. So that type of situation we arise. So any contact resistance will not, this contact resistance will lower in the bridge circuit. So no calculation, nothing, whatever the bridge balance equation will die, that will be absolutely correct. But it will be in the detector circuit. So it will make the detector more sensitive or less sensitive, it does not matter. It is no way I mean coming to picture. So I'm, uh, denoting some current because we have to calculate something. Uh, this I2 which is a resistance uh, which is a current through the resistance R2, I4 is a current through the resistance R4 and at balance this R4 is, I4 is also flowing through RT and since it is no current is flowing through the detector in balance and also this I2 is full is flowing through the this R3 as well as through R1 back to the battery, right. This is called the RTD is connected to the bridge by the three wire method. So this is all about your RTD, one of the most accurate temperature sensors.